Hello, in this video, we're going to explore scale factor. And in particular, we're going to look at how changing the measurement of one dimension or more can affect the perimeter and how that can also affect the area. So when we are looking at perimeter, we call that scale factor the linear scale factor because it has to do with a measure of distance. And when we look at scale factor as it relates to area, we're going to call it the area scale factor because it is related to the space inside a shape. So before we get started, let's review the definition of a scale factor. A scale factor is a number that we use to multiply or divide, but technically dividing is the same thing as multiplying by that fraction. So a scale factor is a number that we use to multiply the dimensions of an object to either enlarge or reduce its size. I imagine you have a drawing of a house and you want to make a smaller or larger version of that drawing. The scale factor tells you how much bigger or smaller the new drawing will be. So for example, if this is my drawing of the house and these are the dimensions, if I multiply each dimension by two, it means that the scale factor is 2. We usually use SF to denote scale factor. So the scale factor is 2. That means that the uh, dimensions will be doubled, right? Now, if I have a drawing of a house and these are the dimensions and I multiply each side by 0 0.5 or half, that means the scale factor is half, the new drawing will be a reduced or a shrunk version of the original drawing. So how do we know just by looking at the scale factor if we're going to have an enlargement or a reduction? If the scale factor is a number greater than 1, say for example a number 2 or 3 or 10 or 1.5 or 2.3, all these numbers are greater than 1. That means we will have an enlargement. If my scale factor is between 0 and 1, we will have a reduction. So that means, example, numbers like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.99, all of those are numbers between 0 and 1, and that means we have a reduction. Now, if your scale factor was exactly 1, we will have no change, because you're multiplying all the dimensions by 1, and that does not change their value, okay? So why do we learn and study scale factors? Why do we learn about them? Because scale factors are really important when it comes to creating models. Uh, blueprints, things like that. So you want to have an accurate representation of an object, but in a different size. There's a name for that as well in math, and it's similarity. Okay, so if you have two objects that are similar in size, it means that um, they are proportional. It means that the dimensions change by the same scale factor. Okay, all right, so now let's get into uh, our lesson, which is exploring how changing one or two dimensions in a shape can affect the scale factor. And I'm going to start with a specific case study just to simplify things so that we don't start with something overly complicated. I'm going to look at squares specifically. And the reason I'm doing that is because squares are special because all the dimensions are the same. So if I have a square, for example, with a side length of nine, it means all the sides are equal to nine. OK, and to simplify things even more, I'm not going to look at area to start. I'm just going to look at perimeter. So I'm going to look at what we called earlier the linear scale factor. OK, so I shaded this first row because every time I calculate the perimeter of another square, I'm going to compare that perimeter to this square, the one that is one by one. OK, all right. So let's begin. We are going to create several examples and then we're going to generalize our findings to a rule. All right, let's begin. So here I have a square that has a dimension of one centimeter. The units can be anything you want. One meter, one yard, one mile, whatever you like, as long as you are using the same units. So here I have a one by one square. Let's calculate the perimeter from our formula. We know that the perimeter of a square is four times X. So it has four times one in this case, which is equal to four centimeters. Always, always write your units. So this is the perimeter of a one by one square. Let's move on to our next square, which is a two by two. 
the perimeter will be 4 times 2, which is equal to 8 centimeters. I'm not going to do any generalizing yet. I'm just going to find perimeter right now. If I have a 3 by 3 square, my perimeter will be 4 times 3, which is 12 centimeters. Let's do this one. It's 10 by 10. So perimeter is 4 times 10, which is 40 centimeters. So the first thing we should notice is that when we increase the dimensions, our perimeter also increases. And that makes sense because now you have more distance around the shape. So the perimeter is going to be a larger number. Now let's try to figure out what that scale factor is. And remember, we said we're going to relate everything to this square right here. So if we have a uh, square that is one by one and then we double the dimensions. So here the scale factor of the dimensions is two. We multiplied everything by two to get this squared, didn't we? What happens to the perimeter? Well, the perimeter also gets multiplied by two because four times two is equal to eight. So the linear scale factor is two. That means the perimeter changed by two, a factor of two, when the dimensions changed by a factor of two. Beautiful. Let's check the next one. Here, the scale factor is three because we multiplied one by three in order to get three here. One times three is three. So when we compare the perimeters, what happens? Four turned into a 12. So we did multiply the perimeter also by three. So the linear scale factor is equal to three. So to summarize that, when the dimension was tripled or increased by a scale factor of three, the perimeter or linear scale factor also increased by a factor of three. Okay, now let's do that last one. Let me just pick a different color here. Let's do green this time. All right, so to go from here to here, I multiplied each side by 10, right? So I got 10 and 10 here. So what happens to the perimeter? Well, 4 became 40. So yes, it got multiplied by 10. So the linear scale factor is equal to 10 as well. So let's generalize that to a rule. The rule is if the, um, if the, dimensions, if the dimensions are increased by a scale factor of, say, that's an F, everybody, of a, that's just a random number, like 2, like 3, like 10, then the, uh, the linear scale factor or the perimeter will also increase by the same scale factor. So if I have a shape, let's do a circle just because, a random shape, okay? If I have a circle and I increase the radius or the diameter, let's make it easier. Let's do the diameter. If I increase that by 10, the perimeter of that circle will also increase by a factor of 10. Same number. And why is that? That is the main question. Why is that? Because they're both linear. Because they both measure distance, length. They're both linear. They're both one dimensional. So if I multiply dimension by two, perimeter gets multiplied by two. Okay? All right. So that is with respect to perimeter. Now let's look at area. Okay, so we're still looking at squares, but this time we're going to look at what happens to area. So let's begin. I have a one by one square. The area of a square from your formula sheet is x squared, length times width, right? So here it's one times one or one square, which is equal to one centimeter squared. Please note the units. Okay. So far, so good. Now let's do the next square. So it's a two by two. So perimeter is going to be two squared, which is equal to four centimeters squared. Awesome. Let's continue. This is a three by three. So perimeter, no, I've been writing perimeter this whole time. This is area. Whoopsie. Area, area, area. That's better. Area. So it's going to be three squared, which is equal to nine centimeters squared. That is the area, not perimeter, whoopsie. All right, so here I have a 10 by 10. So area is equal to 10 squared, which is 100 centimeter squared. So now we calculated all of the areas, let's find a pattern. So 
If we compare the original square to the second square, what happened to the dimensions? The dimensions got multiplied by 2 because 1 times 2 gave us 2. Well, what happened to the area? Hmm, the area was 1. It became 4. So the area scale factor is 4. Interesting. So when the linear scale factor was 2, the area scale factor was 4. Cool. Let's continue. Next one. Um, here, let's change color so it's easier to see. All right, so to go from the original square to the second square, we multiplied the dimensions by 3. 1 times 3 gave us 3. So the scale factor here for the dimension is 3. What happened to the area? 1 became 9. So the area scale factor was 9. The number that we multiplied to get from one area to another was 9. So 3 compares to 9. Okay, let's continue. Um, next one. So the 1 and the 10. So 1 to turn into 10, we multiply by 10. So the linear scale factor for the dimension is 10. Here, we went from 1 to 100. So that means the area scale factor is 100. So 10 compares to 100. So when it comes to area, the uh, scale factors are no longer the same. The, the Changing the dimension by 2 does not change the does not change the area by scale factor of two. No, it doesn't work. So then, what is what is the pattern? Two became four. Three became nine. Ten became one hundred. What do we do to this number to turn it into this number? And the answer is we square it. Okay, which kind of makes sense because the unit for area is always squared, right? Because it's two dimensional. So that means. If the linear scale factor is equal to A, the area scale factor is going to be A squared. It is going to be the square of the original scale factor, okay? So um, in other words, when you increase by a certain scale factor, the area increases by the square of that number, okay? Um, all right, so let me, let me demonstrate that because this screen is very messy right now. So let's say I've got a circle with a diameter of 5, okay? And I multiply that by 5. How would the area change? Sure, the diameter changed by 5 and it became 25. But what happened to the area? The area did not increase by a factor of 5. No, it increased by a factor of 5 squared, which is 25. So it is 25 times bigger. When the diameter became 5 times bigger, the area became 25 times bigger. Okay, so now we found, we generalized to a pattern when it comes to scale factor. Area scale factor and perimeter scale factor. Now let's look at a couple of examples. All right, so here we have a 1 by 1 square that is enlarged to a 6 by 6 square. How many times longer is the perimeter of square B compared to square A. So the first thing you want to ask yourself, am I dealing with something linear or area? Here it's linear. We're going from linear to linear, right? Because here the dimension changed and uh, perimeter is linear. It is one dimensional. That means if the dimension here got increased by six, by a factor of six, it means the perimeter will increase by a factor of six as well. It is the same scale factor, right? So the answer is how many times longer is it? Well, it is longer by a factor or a scale factor of six. I'm actually going to write scale factor. You notice how here they are not asking us for the actual perimeter? No, they're just asking us by the number that it increases by. It increases by a factor of six, okay? All right, next part. It says, how many times larger is the area of the square compared to the original square? So now area is not linear, right? So if the first scale factor is six, the area scale factor is going to be six squared. So that is 36. You can use your calculator, of course, to figure that out. So the area will be larger by a scale factor of 36. 
That's really cool. So the perimeter will increase by a factor of six only, but the area will increase by a factor of 36. Now think about that. What, is that. what does that tell us? It means that the smallest shape that we do to, um, let me say that again, the smallest change that we do to a shape, the, um, the more exaggerated the change is to the area, okay? All right, let's do another example. We have a two by two square right here. And uh, it is enlarged to a 14 by 14 square right here. All right. So it says, how many times longer is the perimeter of square B compared to square A? So just like what we did earlier. So here we're going from a linear to linear. Okay. So that means the scale factor will not change. So how do we get from 2 to 14? We multiply by 7. 2 times 7 is 14. So the scale factor is 14. That means the perimeter will also change by a scale factor of 14. Uh, oh my gosh, oh, you guys, so many typos. The scale factor is seven. So here it will also change by a factor of seven, not 14, whoopsie, whoopsie. So the perimeter will be seven times longer. Awesome. Now, how many times larger is the area? So this time we're going from linear to area. So if the scale factor for linear was 7, what's the scale factor for area? That's 7 squared, which is 49. That means the area will be 49 times larger. Okay, awesome. So now we know how to deal with um, scale factors for um, perimeter and area. Now, in the next video, we are going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to look at rectangles as opposed to squares. And what's special about them really is that, um, well, actually the squares are the special case, not the rectangles, is that we have two different dimensions for the rectangles. So do we change one or both? And how does that affect our perimeter? So that